so just a quick recap what we have done up till now so initially we started uh, looking at what is computer science uh, then we looked at the different careers or domains or application areas of computer science and then for like three four sessions we spent time on algorithms especially we looked at how we represent algorithm in terms of pseudo code and flow chart and then we ended that session with uh, with looking at um, pseudo code and flow chart of sorting algorithms then before last class we did something about input and output peripherals of computer science and in the last lecture we looked at how data can be represented or how data is represented inside our computers right? so this video is about quick recap of what we did in the last lecture so we looked how data can be represented in the computers we look at the example when you press d key what happens in the uh, system how d is represented inside cpu and then how it gets displayed right so we saw that everything that in the real world when discretized and digitized is saved in computer in very specific format on very specific data format this actually is binary numbers so whether you are writing a text or you are saving an image uh, your data is usually stored in binary numbers uh, then we looked at example of different uh, number systems that we use daily for example we use uh, decimal number systems which is base 10 number system um, then we looked at the notion of uh, placeholders in decimal number system so we have unit 10 100 thousand and each placeholder has a power of 10 so unit it has 10 to the power 0 then 10 has 10 to the power 1 so each placeholder uh, power gets increased by the uh, by by the number by the power of 10 so 10 raised to power 0 then 10 raised to power 1 then 10 raised to power 2 so and so forth right so we quickly saw that and then we saw that we can have a, a number system that is not only on base 10 but we can make a number system which can be based on 7 or 8 or 9 right anything which is convenient for us and then we saw like common number system that are used these days so we have decimal and decimal as the name suggests there are 10 symbols in decimal number system so from 0 to 9 so each placeholder can have a value from 0 to 9 and then we have binary so binary means 2 so 0 or 1 then we have octal number system in which we have 7 symbols starting from 0 to 7 and then we have hexadecimal number system it, it has 16 symbols or 16 values so starting from 0 to 15 but the catch over here is you have 0 to 9 and then 10 is represented as A 11 is represented as B and so on and so forth then we looked at like fundamental point like why modern computer use binary number system so we saw like um, what are the benefits of using binary number systems right? um, and then we saw that uh, data of different types you get stored in binary number then but there is a header on top of the data package so computer recognizes whether the clicked icon is a text or, or it's an image or like which software to use to open that specific file which we have clicked right so yeah these were the benefits of uh, using binary number system so um, the first thing is binary number system there is no ambiguity in electronic system so binary means zero or one or true or false or presence of something or absence of something so it gets uh, represented very easily in electronic in an electronic surface right um, then i give like a reading assignment of looking at qubits so qubit so bit has either 0 or 1 as we call in binary number system but when you go to the quantum computing the bit uh, bit can store four values so that was like you're reading a reading assignment as well and then we saw that like as i saw that um, binary number systems are zero or one and they can be represented by switch so on or off so on is means one and off means zero and in electronics this switch is this switching is done by this electronic device which is called transistors 
so let's say you have eight bits eight bits means one byte and each placeholder can be either zero or one so on or off right and by the combination of these on and off switches we can represent any number right so these act like switches and switch can be like transistors for our understanding right so if all are on so all the eight bits are on so we will see like how to uh, read that uh, then we see historical perspective of uh, transistors so these three scientists as you can see on the screen uh, they got nobel prize in 1956 for inventing these transistors so transistor was like a breakthrough in that era i showed you this example of this any computer in 1946 so this was like a huge machine situated in a room uh and at that time there were no transistors so there were vacuum tubes right so but with the advent of transistors the size of this machine gets smaller exponentially so now these days the smallest transistor has a width of 4 atoms which means that 1500 transistors can be fit in on one single strand of hair and the latest one of the latest uh, cpu these days has 18 billion transistors in it so in eniac there were only 1800 transistors and the eniac has, has a size of whole room and but now the power has increased exponentially and the size has reduced exponentially as well so we have on one single chip 18 billion transistors we can think of 18 billion transistors as 18 billion vacuum tubes and then we in the last we saw moore's law and that was your reading assignment as well uh and then we saw like historical perspective we started from this pestilin machine which was mechanical calculator having only addition subtraction subtraction facility uh then this was charles babbage differential engine then punch machines came in 1920 10 then 1920 then the eniac 1946 and then the birth of pcs and now we have laptops in our hand and probably th this is the future quantum computing and i finished this lecture the last lecture by having a saying of confucius the famous chinese philosopher he says that he said that study the past if you would define the future so that was like a quick recap what we did in the last lecture